The G7's decision to take up the issue of lead pollution and lead poisoning is an important step towards solving an issue that has received too little attention over the years given the toll that it takes on public health and development. Today, the best available estimates suggest that 800 million children have a concentration of lead in their blood that is indicative of lead poisoning. This concentration of five micrograms of lead per deciliter of blood is one that the World Health Organization recognizes as causing permanent brain damage and IQ loss. Unlike some environmental challenges, addressing lead pollution does not require new technologies or the reordering of entire economies. Indeed, it's a challenge that we can solve now. The sources of lead that contribute most to exposures can vary significantly from place to place. Sources that are identified frequently include unsound recycling of lead acid batteries, mining and smelting operations, lead-based paints, abandoned sites with lead-contaminated soil and dust, contaminated spices and other food products, ceramic cookware made with lead-based glazes, aluminum cookware contaminated with lead, traditional medicines, cosmetics, toys, and other tainted consumer products. Pues y nadie está enterado, nosotros no estábamos enterados. Cuando fueron a hacer la prueba, todas las casuelas salieron positivas y ya no las usamos. We tried to uh, analyze the pigment and the spices in the laboratory, which, and we had the uh, result that the pigment uh, was really with a high concentration of lead uh, chromium inside. Even when we had uh, some monitoring and uh, interview with them, they didn't know that it is so poisoning. They they are using just the color uh, for the color of the product they are producing. Comprehensive efforts to address lead pollution and lead poisoning often include five basic elements. The first of these is health surveillance, and this includes measuring the concentration of lead in the blood of kids. This tells us the prevalence, the severity, and the demographic and geographic distribution of lead poisoning across a population. The second step is understanding what sources of lead are the primary drivers of exposure in a specific area. And this is often done by going into the homes of lead poisoned children and then analyzing all of the consumer products and foods and environmental media in their home to understand which ones are contributing to their lead poisoning. The third step is designing source specific interventions so that the sources that are most contributing to lead poisoning in an area can be addressed. The fourth step is sharing all of the data and information and lessons learned in these first three steps so that all actors can contribute to solutions. And the fifth step is institutionalizing this process so that municipal, provincial, and national governments can carry this work forward sustainably.